introduction. Uh, thank you guys for coming to see this talk. I'm going to talk about Ross Industrial, and I'm going to present it as an open source case study. So first off, what do I hope to, to present to you today, to communicate to you today? Well, what I really want to do is use Ross Industrial as an example to motivate others to start an open source project or effort that builds upon Ross but is, is separate, right? There's a group of people who are supporting it and doing the development, and uh, um, even though it's a part of ROS, there's a core group behind it. And then for those of you who maybe aren't management type people and you don't want to manage something and you want to, you want to develop code, I, I want to motivate you guys to participate in, in these programs and be an active participant. So. I'm talking about more than just being a, a, a casual user or you know, responding to uh, an email on the users group. I'm talking about developing. So um, what, I, and what am I going to talk about? The first thing I'm going to talk about is the emergence of these, these programs, right? These small, but, these small but organized groups that are developing um, components and capabilities within ROS, um, and they're coming out of the community. But they're disparate groups in that they come, they have members from different organizations, and so it isn't just one company or one research lab, it's a lot of people coming together. And really that, that's what ROS Industrial is, and it aims to be more of that in the future. So I'm going to present it as a case study of, of how we started ROS Industrial and why that made sense. And then I'll talk about the importance of these programs and why I think they need to, to be organized. And, and even though it feels like we're kind of dividing up the Ross uh, world, why that's important. And then I'll, I'll, I'll end with some conclusions. So it, it shouldn't be no surprise that these communities, these small, or small groups, have, have developed out of the Ross, or the Ross community. Um, I get, I've gotten in arguments before with people about you know, what ROS capability is, is very good and what things need to be improved, but the reality is none of that matters all that much because where ROS's core strength is, is in its community. It's the fact that we can have a meeting over the weekend and attract you know, 250 plus people. So when I talk about programs, I really mean things that are larger than just a single package that somebody puts out on GitHub. Um, and I mean that there's something that there's an organization behind them. There's a group of people, they meet, they, they create tasks. So it's really a software development team. And there's maintenance behind it. So when they put out a product, when they put out their, their package, they, they stand behind it, they do bug fixes. Well, it turns out, we already have a lot of these. Um, we have the, the SIGs, and some of those are pretty well organized. Uh, the driver SIG is a good example of one uh, that's well organized and probably uh, has a core group associated with it. We saw a presentation on web tools. Um, and again, that was, uh, you can see that there are multiple institutions standing behind it, and that's very important when my management comes to me and says, hey, should we use web tools for our next project? If, if I go and look and it only had one developer ever developing it, I may not really consider it an option because I might end up supporting web tools by myself. But now I know that there's a group of people behind it and there's probably low risk in us using it in a project. And there's, there's many others um, as well. And Ross Industrial just happens to be one of those. Ross Industrial is a little bit unique because we're not so much focused on the technology, like web tools maybe. We're focused on the market of industrial robotics and automation applications. So I'm going to give you some background and talk a little bit about uh, Ross Industrial and, and how we got where we are. So as I said, our focus is industrial automation and robotics applications. So it's not necessarily technology focus, but it's that market that we're going after. The primary objectives of the Ross Industrial Program are um, first, developing uh, technology, 
So when we first got started, we focused on developing drivers for all the various different robot uh, platforms and standardizing interfaces so that we could swap in and out robots very easily. Uh, we've gotten well along on that. So now we're talking uh, more about what capabilities are specific to industrial applications. And if you saw the demo at the Yaskawa Motoman booth, you'd see some capability, a deburring application that is very industrial and it's not something that we would expect would come out of the Ross community at large, but it's within Ross, it's within Ross Industrial. We also hope to create a community just like Ross, but smaller. And this is very important in the industrial world because these things don't tend to self-organize like they do in, in the software world. And so there are lots of people doing industrial research and they don't really know about each other and we hope Ross Industrial will bring them together. Um, we also want to engage industry. And this is something that these technology focused groups don't necessarily focus on is how do we go out to industry and get them involved, get their opinion on what we should be doing and you know, maybe get them to, to help fund us, give us some money so we can we can continue development and do things like maintenance. Now I don't want to, I know a lot of people are interested in, in what Ross Industrial can do and, and I've given this talk several times and there's more information on, the, on our YouTube channel. If you look at uh, Ross-I Consortium, you'll find a lot more information. Um, but I didn't want to take what little time I had here to, to talk a lot about Ross Industrial because my, my main goal is to motivate you to start something similar. So I want to talk about instead how we did what we did when we created Ross Industrial. But here is uh, the, our one year video. Um, so we're at about a year and a half now. But here are some of the applications we were able to do. Uh, this is the very first thing we did when, when I was at Willow Garage. We demonstrated on Motoman, the pick and place. And then we moved on to different, uh, different robots. Uh, in the industrial world, just about every industrial robot's a different color. So you can see we, we support all colors of robots. So a lot of you may look at this and be like, well, that's not impressive. Ross has been able to do that for a while. But remember, we're selling it to industry. And they haven't seen that. They're not plugged into the Ross community. And they haven't seen it happen on their own equipment. And those two things together really speaks to them. And it, you know, it gets them interested in what we're doing. So this video also shows a lot of stuff that did not happen at uh, Southwest Research, where I work. And I said we were trying to build a community. And, and that's true of some of these, these uh, projects that we're showing in this video happen around the world. And we did blatantly steal the, the one-year video idea from Ross, so uh, thanks for that. So I'm going to let it play through and at the end you can see some of the, uh, the all the groups that uh, that uh, send in videos for this. So, like I said, we're at about a year and a half into it now, and we really want to grow this community. We have uh, good relationships, both in the United States and here in Europe, but uh, we would really like to see more people be involved. All right, so if I'm trying to convince you to start uh, a, a program uh, related to Ross or that builds upon Ross, uh, I have to tell you how it's going to benefit you because you're probably going to you're probably going to want to know how is this going to help me if I go through all this effort because it really is a lot of effort. So I can tell you how Southwest Research has benefited from the Ross Industrial Program. Uh, the first is increased name recognition. Um, there are probably people in this audience who know who I am and know who Southwest Research Institute is only because of Ross Industrial. But we're actually a very large company. We're in the United States. And uh, we should be a lot more well-known than we are. But uh, Ross Industrial is certainly helping in that regard. Uh, we've gotten dozens of new contacts all around the world. Uh, these, these are everything from potential clients um, to collaborators. Um, so that has definitely been very valuable for us. 
several R&D project awards. So Southwest Research Institute, wh whom I work for, the way we make our money is governments and commercial companies uh, pay us to do R&D for them. So I can point to that and show my management, look, there's a, there's a dollar return investment for, for what we've done uh, with Ross Industrial. We've also created the Ross Industrial Consortium in, in North America, and that's brought in industry, so that was one of our goals. Uh, that's, that's a method of getting industry involved, but it's also a method of getting them to kind of pony up and fund development. It's development that they're interested in and they want to drive, but uh, we, we do need funding to get, keep these things going. Um, there's been a European Ross Industrial effort led by Fraunhofer, IPA, and that is, uh, that's very valuable to us to be associated with such an institution over here in Europe. And finally, we attract top talent. We don't have to go out and, and find people to come work for us anymore. They come and find us, and they contribute software, and we know who they are before we ever get started. So what's the recipe for success if you want to create a, a, an open source program? Well, first you have to come up with the idea, um, and you know, these don't have to be groundbreaking ideas. Uh, saying that we're going to use ROS for industrial applications is quite simple, actually. Um, and other people were thinking about it. We didn't know that, but that's, it, it, it wasn't a very complex idea. Um, you have to build it, you have to show something, because it's really hard to show, to sell something or tell people about something that's not there. We all understand vision, um, but not everybody will buy your vision. Most, but most people will, will at least listen when you say, hey, I have something to show you. Uh, brand it, um, that's what Ross Industrial has done, that is what Ross has done, uh, Web Tools has done a good job. You need a good name, you need something to, that people will associate with your program. Uh, promote it early is something that I learned from Willow Garage, which is, you know, you have to tell people about what you're doing before you've really even started. Um, you may get help, you may get feedback, and you're going to start generating buzz. Um, but a lot of times I find that we, we wait till we're all done, and then we tell people what we did. And uh, you may end up in a place where, where nobody, I don't want to say nobody cares, but, but you wouldn't, you're not getting the, the results that you thought you were going to get. Documentation, we all know if it isn't documented, we're probably not going to use it, so I don't have to belabor that point. Uh, get others involved. And that means tell people what you're doing and ask for their help. And most importantly, when they say no, ask again. Because everybody I've worked with, they all said no the first time. And you know, eventually, you, you ask them, and they figure out what you're doing, and they figure out how it works for them, and then they become active participants. So you'll get a lot of no's. Uh, funding, we have to find ways to fund these things. For Ross Industrial, that was through the consortium. I don't know that there's any magic to this. I think for everybody it's going to be different, so I'm not going to talk too much about it. And then ultimately, you will benefit, right? You as the person who creates it, and you as the people that are part of that group, you will benefit in you know, probably similar ways that Southwest Research has, but in other ways too. So what's the importance of these programs? Why, why am I up here saying, hey, you should start an open source program um, we all have ROS, we can all use the ROS wikis, we can use the users group, isn't that good enough? Well, first off, like I said, if I go look at something like web tools and I see there are five people standing behind it, there are multiple lines of support. That's important to me. There are not, that's not necessarily true of all the packages within ROS. And so even if there were something better than something like web tools, I'm gonna use web tools because it has that support. It also provides opportunities that for, for investment, all right? And this is very important. This is why I, you know, I think Ross Industrial is unique because we focused on a market, but it allows people in that industry or that market to say, okay, now I understand where, what my investment is going to buy. So when we go and talk to people about why they should join Ross Industrial, we talk about the applications that it's going to enable. And even though everybody in this room is smart enough to look at Ross and say, oh, it can do all these things, if you don't, if you don't market that right and you don't focus on 
what is really important to people, and part of that is creating this program that's market focused, um, that message will get lost. And it's gonna be very difficult for you to end up uh, getting, getting funding. Now I know there are some companies like Google and, and you know, everybody on this list over here who understands the power of ROS, but those are few and far between. There are a lot more companies out there that if you, if you approach them in the right way, they'll fund things. One of the other things that I think is important is that these groups can then push back on the core ROS development and say, this is what we need. Uh, so a lot of our members within the ROS Industrial Consortium, they tell us that they need a robust, reliable core. Um, so we can push back on OSRF and say, this is what our members say they need. It's what, what we, we think we uh, should focus on. And even better, we can take some of the membership fees and dues and fund some of that development in OSRF. Otherwise, it's not very likely that anybody would have went to OSRF directly and given them funds. And finally, when you work in a large group like that, you'll, you'll, your collaborators will force you to consider broader applications, and you'll end up with a much uh, you know, generic or multi-purpose library when, in the end. So, in conclusion, I think everybody should consider starting or joining a program. Um, I think you should be active participants, uh, and you know, because you're here, you're, you're likely at least somewhat active, but I'd encourage you to take a more active role. Um, get involved with some of these groups and start some of them on your own. Uh, I think market-focused programs are very important, and I put three examples uh, up there that I've talked to people about, but there doesn't seem to be a group within the Ross community that's coalescing around these topics. Uh, autonomous vehicles, micro air vehicles, and, and medical robots. These are all important market areas that uh, could have groups similar to Ross Industrial associated with them. I think one of the reasons to do these groups is if you start one of these groups or you're one of the core members, you'll benefit in the ways, in, in various ways, but certainly ways that, that Southwest Research benefited from Ross Industrial. Um, but I do believe if you're gonna do something, it should help the whole community. And I think these groups do. Um, they, they focus attention on Ross. They bring in people who otherwise wouldn't be interested in Ross um, through these market-focused efforts. And I think all programs, all the existing ones today, should, should be encouraged to be more open and involve uh, the community a lot more. And you know, I can point back at Ross Industrial and say, we don't do this enough. And, and that's part of the reason why I'm here, is to engage all of you and say, if you have interest, let me know. I want, I want you to, to be part of the Ross Industrial community. And I think other groups should, should work just as hard to do the same. And that's it.